tell me how you woke. Cause remember, my brother ain't no cash game. Tell me how you woke. Tell me how you woke. Zhang, I'm from New York. My name is Stefan Blanco. I'm a senior here at Penn State. Hi, my name is Kelly Chu. I am a freshman. My name is Sean Brain. I'm a junior. So I'm a first generation Filipino American. Uh, my parents immigrated here from uh, the Philippines. I guess you can I can identify as an Asian American. I'm an immigrant. I was born in Hong Kong and then I moved to Philly when I was five. Identify as a number of things, mainly as an Indonesian, uh, Muslim, and American, and a third culture kid, as I lived in five countries before coming here. I guess I identify myself as a New Yorker, uh, a brother. I guess most importantly, a first generation Asian, and uh, first kid to go to college for my family. So, what identity means to me personally is like how you quantify all your like different characteristics and like different personalities that you have into like kind of just like a singular like words. I think it's who we want to be. It's who we think we are. I, it's the word that first comes to mind when we're asked to describe ourselves. It really is like how you kind of like craft it and like what you really like at that moment like really like identify with. I think there's so much components that go into identity. There's a lot of things that you see within yourself and there's also a lot of things other people label you as well. There's just some parts of you that you can't change. There's just some parts of you that you've grown up with that you knew about like your morals or whatever taught by your parents, taught by your environment around you that it just becomes unchanged. And other things do add up to you as you grow up in life, but there's just some traits that can't leave you. Uh, definitely my uh, identity has changed over the years from just being a little Asian kid in high school to a proud like Asian American. I think I moved away from I guess being locked in just one sort of identification myself like um I would never say I was extremely prideful of being Asian like I, I understood my identity and I respected it but like I wasn't flaunting it or anything like I didn't go out to like Asian parades and stuff like that and uh, during conversations that never really came up. I wasn't really exposed to culture that much. The most that I've like been exposed to is probably like whenever my parents spoke Tagalog at home. So when I went to high school and everything, like most of my friends were uh, Caucasian. Uh, my one best friend just so happened to be Filipino. So uh, that was another way in which I was able to like kind of uh, get into my culture. But same as me, like, we were both, we both kind of identified as, like, whitewashed Asian Americans, which, uh, looking back, it was, like, mm, huge steps from where I am today. Growing up, I grew up in inner city Philly, so I've come from an urban community, and I've always, like, hung around, I guess, like, black and Hispanic people. I never really identified it with Asians. I used to be, like, very ashamed of it. Like I said, I would be like, I never hang out with Asians, I don't like Asians, blah, 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 and stuff like that, and so, like, I guess a defining moment, I mean, I was involved in high school, like I was president of the Asian club in my high school, but when I came to Penn State, coming to a PWI, coming from an urban environment where everything is very diverse, having my identity as a Chinese person, I really needed to grasp that, to grasp it. Like, I didn't want to become just another person in a PWI. Once I came to Penn State and everything, and I found the Filipino Association, I was able to, like, learn more about my culture and, like, identify more as not just like a Filipino American, but as an Asian American in general. Well, I experienced a lot of different cultures because they were all over. I was born and raised in Indonesia for about like first half of my life. And the next year, a few years before coming to Penn State, I lived in the UK, uh, Egypt, and Russia. But yeah, it was just an experience of a lot of different cultures, experience of a lot of different people, meeting people from all types of walks of life, from places in you know, in UK, being people who are very well off, you know, very comfortable lifestyle like here in America. While, you know, contrasting that, meeting people in Egypt, you know, who live just down the street from me in like shacks, you know, garbage on the streets and, and poverty everywhere. From that, I learned a lot of respect for different different people and, and learned how to see life in a lot of different viewpoints. I think there was a time in high school where I really didn't identify as like Asian American and kind of like didn't see myself as like a minority, more just like a 
student. And, like, that's not a bad thing, per se, but, like, there was a time where I did really did kind of, like, lose sense of, like, who I was as far as, like, culture goes. People kind of pointed out, I was like, oh, you're Asian. I'm like, no, I'm, like, a person, but Asian, but I'm not one of those Asians. To be honest, most people just think I'm white, you know, because I'm half white. They don't, I don't look that Asian, you know, I'm not obviously Muslim or anything. Um, so I've never felt the need to hide it, and I don't, you know, I'm very proud of who I am, and I've always been like that. I was very, like, I did hide my Chinese identity a lot, because when my mom enrolled me in school, she used my Chinese name, Lok, so, like, on roll sheets, they would call me as Lok Chu instead of Kelly. Kelly is my English name, like, legally, but they would call me as Lok, and I would always be like, call me Kelly, call me Kelly. Like, I was very ashamed of it, I'd say. But it definitely did affect me in high school, since, like, I didn't really have, uh, like I said before, like, I didn't have that many Asian friends. I had one and maybe a couple of acquaintances, but we never really talked about, like, culture and stuff. In fact, we, we really never talked too much about culture in my high school. That definitely affected me in a way in which, like, I didn't, I couldn't identify as Asian American, because I, in all honesty, like, I didn't really have too much knowledge behind, like, the struggles that we went through and, like, what it means to be Filipino-American and all that, so having that lack of culture back in high school really affected me growing up, and I'm always curious to see, like, how I would have been if I had known more about, like, my culture and such when I came in as a freshman. You know, I much, I enjoyed to tell people I was Muslim. I wore that as a title proudly, uh, even though I'm technically, I'm not really a believer, but because of the way I grew up, because of, you know, the hardships that I've seen people face the bullying, the discrimination, the stereotypes. I always stuck with that rather than push it away because, you know, I'm one with those people. You know, they're people who are like me. And I would not, just because I'm a non-believer, say I'm not Muslim because of that, you know. It, it'd be, it, for me, it would feel like, you know, I'm pushing them away and I'm detaching myself from them and trying to escape, you know, something that they're going through uh, while I'm going through it at the same time. I think... Uh, identity is something that's like always can is always changing and such like right now like, I identify like as an uh, Asian American and everything but the other day I might identify more as like Filipino or as a social justice advocate a Penn Stater it really all depends on like the situation that you get put in but uh, at the core and everything like you know who you are and like who you represent I feel identity can limit us sometimes Especially if we try to conform to it too much, as opposed to just letting it come naturally. I'm a teenager, like, still developing my identity. I still don't know what my identity is. Um, I know being Asian is a part of my identity, but it's not me completely. It's the word that's sort of assigned to us when someone first meets us. And it's the word that we assign to ourselves when we introduce ourselves. Like, that's just one thing, but I feel sometimes we get too caught up in that one thing. That we lose sight of, like, so many other things. Like, I am a Chinese, I am a Penn State student, I am a poet, I am this, I am that, I am that. And all that combined makes a holistic picture of myself. We should identify as people more than anything else. Like, it doesn't really matter whether we're Asian or white or black. Like, that's just one thing that we sort of... That's in the background of things. Like, what's more important is the future and how we want to move forward as a society.